I have in my hand here one of many tools we can use to take back our country. Hey everybody, it's the Crackpot Farmer and this is the Chill Pill. So what on earth does a wooden spoon have to do with taking back our country? Well, let's back up a little bit. See, when you don't discipline children, they end up being little spoiled brats. Now we have an excellent example of a spoiled brat leading our country. And the past couple of days, he has received some excellent tongue lashings from some people who seriously disapprove of how he is leading said country. But he's not the only one. Most of the people in our government are entitled spoiled brats who've grown up in a little bit of a hierarchy that is our government. They've been in a little bit of a bubble. They're kind of out of touch with reality and the things that are happening in the common life of a day-to-day -day citizen. We need to get rid of that. How do we get rid of that? Well, the biggest tool we have, of course, is voting. But you see, a large portion of our voting population has also been in a little bit of a bubble. They seem to be under the belief that other people are causing their problems and that the government can fix them. Now, see, the way I was raised was that I am responsible for my actions. I need to be held accountable to it and I need to go through the consequences of things I do. I've also been taught that it is my responsibility for getting me out of situations I have put myself in. A large portion of our voting population seems to think that it is somebody else's problem to get them out of situations that they are in or that their problems were caused by somebody else. Example, the government or some other race or some other class or some other way of thinking. That is where their problem lies, not with themselves. Now, I'm not saying that every single person's situation is identical to that. I'm just saying on the general large grand scale of things, people seem to believe that it is the government who needs to be able to bail them out of situations and it is a government that needs to fix problems, not the government that is causing the problems. Now, this is where I'm going to talk about my upbringing for a little bit. See, I was raised as a farm kid here in the middle of nowhere. Well, maybe not the middle. I can see it from my backyard, is what a friend said. Out here in the boonies, we had a little bit of a different way of life. You see, from a young age, I had chores to do. I had animals to take care of, and I had duties around the house I needed to take care of because as a contributor to the mess, I also must clean the mess. While I had my own chores to do, I watched my dad run a good portion of the farm and do a lot of the work. Now, being in the middle of nowhere, almost, we're a very long distance from places, and being farmers, we don't have a whole lot of money to pay people to do things. So when things go wrong, there is but one person to fix those problems. So whether it be a plumbing problem, an electrical problem, an animal having serious problems, drought, financial issues, blah, 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 shingles blowing off the house, it was my dad's problem to fix those. There wasn't any buts about it. He was in the situation. He was the person who was able to respond, making him responsible. Therefore, he had to act. So he had to find ways to make things work. He understood very acutely the problems of money. There wasn't usually an awful lot of it to go around, and debt was very expensive and to be avoided at all costs. He knew that any debt that he incurred and was not able to pay off in his lifetime was passed on to me, his children. I mean, there are more of us, but anyways, I'm using myself as an example. And he did not want to pass off any more debt than was absolutely necessary because it was not me who earned that debt, but him. So this is where my disconnect with our government and most of our voting population seems to come in. I do not want the government to throw all kinds of money all over the place, not over the pond, not in our country. If it's not for an actual necessary project, why are we spending billions on it? That's not the government's job. The government's job is to reduce red tape and get out of our way so that people can take care of their own problems. Now, yes, I understand that there are things that maybe the people on their own cannot organize and do, like, for example, roads is one of the things, but also things like railroads and shipping infrastructure and uh, international relations for trade and those kind of things. But anyways, we should not need billions for abortion programs. We should maybe be spending money on places that can't get clean drinking water. And for goodness sakes, why are we spending billions and millions across the pond on other people's problems when we haven't even freaking dealt with our own? Why are we voting for this? Who is going to pay for this nonsense? We're already past the point in the past couple of years where my children don't have a hope of paying off the debt. Their children are going to be working on the debt incurred in the past couple of years from the government that was in place while I was a young person. My grandchildren dealing with my debt. I don't like that and I certainly don't want it to get any higher. Now I realize it's going to be tough to dig out from under this little bit of a rock we've put ourselves under, but it has to be done before things get any worse. So how the heck can we do that? Let's start at the bottom with the generations coming up. Let's make sure that we're raising strong children who understand consequences, who understand responsibilities and understand the long-term effects of short-term decisions, who understand that instant gratification often leads to long-term problems. Let's start raising children who are part of the solution, not part of the problem. Now I myself am a parent, of two, one who's a toddler and one who thankfully is not large enough to roll yet, and I understand that being a parent is very difficult and it is not possible to be perfect. 
I'm not asking anybody to be perfect. I'm just asking people to maybe open their eyes a little bit, look a little bit further down the road and make sure we're not raising entitled, spoiled brats who don't know how to take responsibility for their actions. Now that's not to say us adults don't have our share of problems either. In the world of Netflix and Tinder and drive-throughs, we really have lost the concept of waiting for things and is all about instant gratification. We can't plan ahead long enough to make a grocery list for the week, let alone maintain a long-term relationship, most of us. So we really have some looking ahead and some figuring out of our own selves to do. How can we be expected to be reasonable voters who actually understand the consequences of who we're voting for if we can't even hardly run our own freaking lives? Now, the only person that can fix you is you, and you have to want to be fixed. Nobody can make you, it is all up to you. So I encourage you to do a little bit of self-reflection and see maybe areas in your own life that you could improve so that we can start improving this country from the bottom up. And if you're a parent, please, for goodness sakes, don't raise spoiled brats because at some point, somebody is gonna have to give them a spanking and hopefully they don't have to have it in front of a whole bunch of other politicians like a particular person in our country has just experienced. I mean, let's be honest, it was an awful lot of fun to watch, but I'd hate to be that person or hate for that to be my child. Thank you for watching. If this is the first video of mine that you've watched and you have enjoyed it, please check out the rest of the chill pills in the playlist that should be on your screen shortly. If you think that watching me do some farming stuff may also be interesting, there are some videos on our channel. Please share around if you think this was actually worth listening to, and hopefully we'll see you again next time.